we're in the deserts. One or two are thinking it might be a wind drought for everyone bar Max Verstappen. Can you give us some hope that won't be the case? I've just got the same information and opinions that everybody else has from the pre-season testing that Red Bull have taken a step forward. But Ferrari, Mercedes-Benz, McLaren, other teams, Aston Martin are saying they're really happy with the progress they've made with their car. They're more drivable, they think they'll be faster, they'll be kinder on their tyres. So let's wait and see. But you have to say it looked pretty ominous from the test that Max in particular and Red Bull in general uh, could well dominate again. If there's one team in that chasing pack, and I guess that was the hope with, that with several teams chasing, one of them might emerge, or is there one of them that you can see who, who look like they're putting together the right ingredients to, to challenge Red Bull, which one would you pick? I think Ferrari looks strongest in terms of overall pace, and, and it's a continuation of last year really, isn't it? With, with Red Bull very fast and Ferrari towards the end of the season anyway, being their, their biggest rivals, Aston Martin started strong last year, disappeared in the middle of the year with some problems and came back better. But it definitely looks like Red Bull from Ferrari, um, but with a very close pack on the gearbox of the Ferrari in terms of McLaren, Mercedes-Benz, Aston Martin and so on. There's been some suggest, I think Max made it, that it'd be awkward for Lewis Hamilton at Mercedes this year. Do you think there will be any awkwardness? What do you think uh, George Russell uh, will maybe try and do to, I suppose, press his, his, his claim to be that the leader of that team going forward over the course of this year? Can Lewis win a race, do you think? And how important will that be after two winless years? Lewis can always win a race, um, and I think it'll be super important to him. I see it as a farewell tour. They've had such success together, Lewis Hamilton and Mercedes-Benz. I don't see acrimony. Uh, of course, by mid-season, he won't be invited to, to some of the meetings. He certainly won't be uh, being made aware of new parts coming along and any developments for the car. So they'll have to start shutting him out. It suits George Russell and it suits Mercedes for him to look like the team leader. I think... George will step out of Lewis's shadow and I think he's got all the ingredients to, to lead that team and I actually think it'll energise Mercedes for 2025, they'll bring a young gun in and I, I would expect, we'll see, um, and, just, and just move on and use it as a step change. So, uh, and I think for Lewis it'll be, I think it's great for Formula One and, and it'll be great for Lewis, so I don't really see any downsides and they're all adults, I don't see any need for there to be uh, friction through through this year. It'll be uncomfortable from time to time. Probably more uncomfortable when Lewis is banging wheels with a Ferrari somewhere in the world. Well, I'll ask about that in a second, but you see a young gun, Kimi Antonelli. Is it a, a, a really key year in his life in racing that he, that, that he can make a success of F2 and, and maybe give himself that opportunity? The front-running teams don't tend to take complete gambles on that sort of thing. If they do put a youngster in, they want to make sure they've got an old hand in, in the other sea, and of course, you know, you could start to consider George Russell that older hand, despite his uh, relative youth. But um, I think they'll be watching out for him. But do I think they would or should go for sort of an Alonso Vettel type? I, uh, I think that's looking backwards. I don't see that Mercedes would want to do that. I think they'll look forward and 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 find somebody to challenge and support George Russell. Is there any aspect to the the Lewis to Ferrari transfer, which implies that Leclerc hasn't done enough to dominate, say, Carlos Sainz over these last two years, that they they think maybe they need someone of, well, greater stature and a proven winner to, to, to lead the team forward. Well, it's interesting, isn't it, that, uh, that they think Lewis can obviously take something to the team that they don't already have. But I, I think it's a more easy situation and decision for Ferrari. Lewis Hamilton, seven-time world champion, transcends Formula One like no other driver currently on the grid and, and, and like few drivers in the 74-year-old history of, of F1. So I, I think it was a no-brainer for Ferrari and, and for Lewis, actually. You've plotted drivers' careers and advised them. Lando Norris got a few questions at testing about whether or not he had made the mistake in not making himself available at the end of this year. What do you think? Did he need to commit his future to McLaren? 
act in haste, repent at leisure, but I think he's very comfortable at McLaren and that's important. And um, you do need some, you need to be flexible. This, this business changes, drivers retire suddenly, get hurt, move teams like Lewis has done and, and pull an option, trigger an option that nobody else knew about apart from the inner sanctum of the team. So it is, um, it's interesting, uh, but yeah, you, you, at the same time, you don't want to sit there trying, you know, prevaricating and find you've missed all the good seats. 